An entire century removed from history. Mysteries that stretch all the way to the root of the world, and secrets that can get entire nations destroyed. The Void Century is one of the most intriguing parts of One Piece's excellent world building. It's captured the imaginations of millions, and yet it remains as mysterious as ever. Even a thousand chapters later, we still don't really know much. But with One Piece allegedly reaching its final big saga, now is a good time to go everything we do know. My name is Hoodie Song, this is Kato, and today let's talk about the Void Century. The Void Century is 800 years from where the One Piece story picks up. It's a span of 100 years that nobody knows anything about. Basically, all history for that 100 year period is gone. History before that period is just fine, and the world government was formed just as the Void Century ended, so everything on that side is fine too. It's just a single stretch of 100 years that's completely erased from everybody's minds. The most impactful thing that we know about the Void Century is the existence of the Great Kingdom. At that time, there was a massive kingdom, one apparently so dangerous that it managed to unite 20 smaller kingdoms against it. We don't know much about it, not even its name, because just its name alone is apparently a secret that would cause unfathomable chaos if Professor Clover is to be believed. In fact, Clover was literally killed the second before he could tell us what that name was. This single kingdom was likely very, very technologically advanced. Vegapunk seems to think so, and he's one of the smartest researchers in the One Piece world. One theory is that the three ancient weapons all originated from this specific kingdom. This would tie up a lot of ideas. For instance, we know that Poseidon is an actual person whose powers pass down the generations, but maybe this line started in the Great Kingdom. It also highlights why 20 different kingdoms would all have to gang up to destroy just one, and why they'd still be so afraid of it after all of these centuries later. When the world government was founded, they banned anyone from talking about the events of this century, and went out of their way to destroy any record of it having existed. The only known records we have detailing the events of this century are the Poneglyphs. The Poneglyphs are giant stone slabs created on Wano and hidden throughout the entire world, entrusted to future generations. Whether by design or not, not many people can actually read them. Despite their best efforts, these things are basically as close to indestructible as anything is in One Piece. When they couldn't destroy them, the world government just forbid all researchers. To them. You might think that being an infamous pirate or rebel would get you into the government's crosshairs. And while that is one way, if you really want to make sure the entire world comes after you, then all you really need to do is try to find out the real history behind this world. If you try to do something like that, or at least pose the potential to do something like that, the world government won't just kill you, they'll kill everyone who could have ever seen you. Entire islands were destroyed to keep the Void Century a secret. The entirety of Ohara, Robin's hometown, was destroyed just because they were researching the Pony. If you're one of the few people still alive who could read these things, then that instantly makes you dangerous. Despite being 8 years old, Robin had a 80 million bounty because she spoke that language. There are a ton of other cases of this happening too. Some of these islands fall to buster calls, but some of them are destroyed by someone named Eam personally. This is exactly what happened to the Leluja Kingdom an entire island destroyed in seconds. Even the few characters who do know about the real truth aren't exactly sharing what they've learned. The Roger Pirates, for instance, read all of the Poneglyphs, but even at his execution, Gold D. Roger never told anyone about the Void Century. He only told Whitebeard, one of the few people on the planet who could protect himself from the repercussions of the world government. Whitebeard himself shouted to the world that the One Piece was real but he said nothing about the Void Century, even if that is arguably more important. Of course, not everything we know about the Void Century has to do with this great kingdom specifically. One of the most interesting things we know happened is the extinction of the Lunarians. The Lunarians were a special race of people, able to use fire without a devil fruit. They were monstrously strong, to the point where everyone else considered them more like gods. This race was hunted down to near extinction, with the only remaining survivor being King, Kaido's right hand. Another interesting thing happened to the Tonton we found out in Dressrosa that they were a race that had been enslaved by the Don Quixote family for hundreds of years. Before the Void Century, all they really did was to be little more than slaves while the kingdom got rich off of their labor. Then the Void Century happened. When it ended, the Don Quixote family were nowhere near Dressrosa, and they had likely been replaced by the Riku family. It's never really stated, but it is implied that the Don Quixotes just used all of their wealth they'd stolen to go over and join the world government instead. The fate of an entire race of people changed, and yet even and they don't know what happened. 
That's how far the world government has gone in order to suppress any knowledge they deemed unfit. Then, of course, we have the near-mythical figure, Joy Boy. Joy Boy is one of the few people we know from the Void Century. During this time, he made a pact with everyone on Fishman Island, and with the help of the gigantic ship Noah and the power of Poseidon, he promised to take the Fishman out of the ocean and into the proper world. That was their pact, but for some reason, Joy Boy couldn't keep up his end of the bargain. The Fishman then decided that somebody else would someday come to them to do what Joy Boy couldn't. I think it's pretty clearly implied that some kind of external conflict was the reason why Joy Boy couldn't keep up this particular promise. This is also when Joy Boy traveled to Laugh Tale and hid the One Piece. There, he recorded the true history of the world so one can know about the Void Century through a means other than deciphering all of the road poneglyphs. Then finally, we have the Shandorians. From what we know, Shandora was one of these cities chosen to protect one of the poneglyphs. It it was ultimately this duty that led to their doom. When the 20 kingdoms united to destroy the Great Kingdom, the Shandorans continued to defend their charge. That is, until half of the island was sent up into Skypea. Which pretty much concludes all we know about the Void Century. We know about a few different events and different figures that took part in them, but that's not really history, is it? As of yet, we don't really know any of the context surrounding any of these events. For instance, was the Great Kingdom a force for good and everyone else attack them out of jealousy? Or is it possible that they were just too powerful and everyone else had to destroy them? Both of these could very well be the case, and yet they're completely different stories. We simply don't have the context we need. After all, there are good marines who are high enough to know the truth. I think we can all agree that Sengoku and Aokiji are fairly decent people. It's hard to believe that they would have stuck by the world government for so long if the truth was straightforward and morally simple. Still, from what we do know, we can make a few speculations. One of the things we've heard about is is a great cleansing. This presumably refers to how the Void Century and everyone in it were scrubbed clean. Many people have speculated that this great cleansing actually refers to the world government using water to drown the rest of the world. After all, their capital is built on top of the Red Line, a 10,000 meter wall, a wall that is presumably too high to flood. How they would achieve something like that is hard to say, but some people think this might be one of Eames' powers. Besides, it makes a lot of sense. Water isn't just a way to kill off massive amounts of people at once, it's also the only counter to Devil Fruits, the strongest force in the One Piece world. If the ancient kingdom was built on the power of Devil Fruits, then raising that water level seems like an easy way to neutralize them. This might be why they called Devil Fruits to begin with. It was a way for the world government to villainize the other side. Hasn't it always felt odd that they had such a negative name despite being some of the most sought after things in the world? A lot of things in One Piece don't quite make sense because of this 100 year gap in history. Most people have speculated that the Red Line itself was created by the world government. Something like that probably can't naturally happen even in the world of One Piece. Besides being the last safe haven from the flood, it's also an awfully convenient way of dividing the world and making it easier to control. Then there are the other almost dead races. Zunisha, for instance, is the last of his race. What happened to the rest? The same question can be asked about the dinosaurs or the ancient giants. Why were they specifically wiped out? It's possible that they sided with the Great Kingdom. Maybe they were even a part of what made them so prosperous to begin with. There are more questions than answers, and whenever we do get an answer, it just raises more questions. At this point, only time will tell the truth. One thing we know for certain though, Oda never disappoints. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on that notification bell. Before I go, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of the incredible patrons over at patreon.com slash kdyt. We're super active in our patron discord server, occasionally throwing some late night anime and movie watch parties. So if that's something you're interested in, pledge just a single dollar to get an invite. You could also follow us on Twitter at Kato Beyond or my personal Twitter at hoodie underscore rights. Links to everything will be in the description. Again, my name is Hoodie Song. This is Kato and thank you for watching.